How we doing? How we doing? Yes, Moby NYC. <laughs> I was so excited when Moby asked me to do this show. They were like, "Are you interested in doing like a virtual show?" I'm like, "A virtual show? Yes, you know, like a show with no audience." And I was like, "Well, sure." You know, pretty much all the shows I do huh, have no audience, so I should be really well prepared for this. <laughs> But no, I really, really wanted to do this show with an audience. But apparently there's this bitch out there named Corona who's causing such a pandemonium and canceling shit. And if I ever see her in person, I will go put on my mask, go outside and personally fuck her up, you know. But not until they have that vaccine because I really don't want to, you know, go one to one with her on a fair one. You know what I'm saying? I got to be... <laughs> You know, but coronavirus is like that bully in third grade that made you afraid to leave school at 3 p.m. Every day, I look out the window to see if she's out there somewhere. And even though I can't see her, I just know she's waiting behind a mailbox or a garbage can or an empty Amazon box, waiting to jump out and say, bitch, I'm here now. What's up? <laughs> bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. So I decided that I was going to do like the other drag queens and make some money on, on, on social media by doing some shows, you know? Halfway through, uh, lip syncing to somebody else's guy, Facebook blocked me because they said it was somebody else's song. Now, why in the world would they even do that? Because they know damn well that I don't own the rights to the song. And if I did own the rights to the song, why would I play it on Facebook? I mean, like, does Beyonce log on to Facebook and then play her own songs? No. I mean, Michelle might do that, but Beyonce would never. <laughs> and I noticed that a lot of these drag queens, right, that when they're going live, a lot of them have a lot of room to perform in really small-ass apartments. So my question is, uh, do they move the furniture beforehand, or was the apartment empty as fuck just before they started? <laughs> and some of y'all be going live and only have two people watching you sis log off and make a three-way call all right save your slow ass internet for more important stuff okay it's like that rap song it goes uh <laughs> your your love ain't got no views you need to cut it your partner dirty as fuck. You need to clean it. <laughs> but baby, we are on lockdown. It's official. It's official. It's official. If you're on lockdown and you know it, say hell yeah. If you're on lockdown and you know it, say hell yeah. If you're on lockdown and you know it, and you got a unibrow to show it. If you're on lockdown and you know it, say hell yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. If you're on lockdown and you know it, make a snack. If you're on lockdown and you know it, make a snack. If you're on lockdown and you know it, and you got a double chin to show it. If you're on lockdown and you know it, make a snack. <laughs> if you're on lockdown and you know it, beat your meat. If you're on lockdown and you know it, beat your meat. If you're on lockdown and you know it, and you got a callous palm to show it, if you're on lockdown and you know it, beat your meat. <laughs> if you're on lockdown and you know it, stay indoors. If you're on lockdown and you know it, stay indoors. If you're on lockdown and you know it, then sit your ass home to show it. If you're on lockdown and you know it, stay indoors. <laughs> yes, yes, y'all like this? Y'all like this? Yes. You know, I kind of wore something like this last year, you know, um, 
to, to Moby and I figured I'd wear it again. And you know, my friends are saying, why are you always wearing those old flouncy, moo moo, captain, Mrs. Roper looking outfits? And I'm like, baby, I'm a drag queen of a certain age and I don't like to tuck. <laughs> Swing low, sweet chariot. <laughs> if I pull this dress up, I can tell you what time it is because the big hand will be on the, anyway. So listen, like I said, the last time I was here, I did a bedtime story and the people loved it so much that they said, Harmonica Sunbeam, can you come back and do another one of your fabulous bedtime stories? And of course, <laughs> I said yes. So here is a bedtime story told my motherfucking way. Can we have some music to set the mood, please? Tonight's selection will be Miss Thing and the Seven Homo Thugs. Miss Thing lives in a big castle with her stepmother, the Queen. Every day, the Queen says to her magic mirror, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fabulous of them all? Every day, the mirror says, you, O oh Queen, are the fabulous up in here. One day, the queen says to her mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fabulous of them all? The mirror says, you, O oh queen, are very fab, but Miss Thing is motherfucking over. The queen sees Miss Thing's face in the mirror. She can't take it. The queen tells her side piece to take Miss Thing into the ghetto and beat her down. But the side piece lets Miss Thing go after she sucks him off. She wanders through the ghetto until she comes across the projects. She walks inside building B and knocks on the door. No one is home, so she picks the lock and goes in. What a fucked up apartment it was. Miss Thing decides to clean up. She washes seven plates, seven cups, seven knives, seven forks, and seven spoons. She dusts seven little chairs and makes seven little beds. Soon, she is so tired, she falls fast asleep. Seven homo thugs live in the apartment. When they arrive home, they are surprised to find Miss Thing. They say they saw how she got that apartment together and decide to let her stay. One day, the queen says to her magic mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fabulous of them all? The mirror says, you, O oh queen, are very fab, but Miss Thing, who lives in the projects with the seven homo thugs, is motherfucking over. Once again, the queen can't take it. She decides to get Miss Thing. The queen dresses up as a Jehovah's Witness. She fills a basket with watchtowers and Jamaican beef patties and sets to look out for Miss Thing. Three hours later, the queen stumbles upon the projects and building B. She knocks on the door and Miss Thing opens it. Would you like a watchtower, said the queen. Um, no, I don't think so, and she goes to shut the door. The queen then says, we are selling beef patties too. How about one of those? Miss Thing gives in and buys one. But this was a special beef patty. The queen has put bruja on it. Miss Thing takes one bite and passes the fuck out. 
When the homo thugs arrive home, they find Miss Thing in a dip on the floor. Maybe she was practicing her death drop and went too far, said one of the homo thugs. No, that shady queen has been here, says another one. The homo thugs think Miss Thing is dead. They make a special bed for her in the boiler room. One day, a repairman with a big dick and good credit came to check on the boiler. He sees Miss Thing lying on her bed. He says to the homo thugs, please let me take her home with me. As the repairman with a big dick and good credit lifts Miss Thing up, the piece of beef patty falls from her mouth. Miss Thing opens her eyes. Miss Thing is alive. That day, the queen asks her magic mirror for the fifth damn time, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fabulous of them all? The mirror says, you, O oh queen, are very fab. But as I told you before, Miss Thing is motherfucking over. The queen gagged so fiercely that she had a heart attack and died. Miss Thing marries the repairman with a big dick and good credit, and they move into the castle and both live happily ever after. This has been a bedtime story told my motherfucking way. <laughs> You know, the importance of staying home is really something that we have to keep, keep telling people because it's so important, the social distancing and all of that. The importance of staying home is so important that they wrote this song about it. You want to hear it? Here it goes. Yeah. 